Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Adi Adibanjo of Ambassade International, welcoming you to another episode of Ambassade Live. It's so good to see you this morning. It's so good to have you join us for another time in God's Word. We look forward to these times together because it's an opportunity to uh, receive from God, to receive uh, a word of instruction, of encouragement, of hope, from God's word to keep us going on our journey of faith, on our journey of fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. Um, uh, every Friday morning, 8 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Eastern, and then 6.30 p.m. in India, 2 p.m. currently in uh, the UK and Nigeria, uh, West Africa, where we have different parts of the world where we have uh, people watching and uh, joining us for these broadcasts. Uh, we, we thank you for doing that. Please uh, share the feed. Uh, let your friends, your family, uh, your, your brothers and sisters in the Lord, even people that you work with, let them know about this uh, so they can join us and uh, partake of what God has in store for us today. Yeah, it's always a joy to be able to bring this. Uh, we spend time waiting on the Lord, praying and seeking His face, and just trusting that the Lord will give us a relevant and an on-time word uh, to speak to somebody's heart. We've been receiving feedback uh, from our viewers in recent times of just how some uh, the word just comes right on time. How the message that was preached was just the right word they needed to hear to help them get through uh, what they were going through and to keep on looking to the Lord and trusting God. So uh, we count it a privilege for us to be able to continue to do that. And we're just so grateful also that you uh, take time to join us, uh, to log in, to uh, look forward to these times together. And uh, we appreciate it so much. Uh, um, Busola will join us in just a, a few minutes uh, as we begin the broadcast today. Uh, but I want to uh, let you know that, um, you know, there's, it's summertime and there's just so much going on and so much happening. Uh, but uh, in the midst of all that, in the midst of all the activity, the increased level of activities, uh, you know, with vacationing and, you know, seeing to ch ch the, uh, your children's needs and your family's needs uh, and through the summer, uh, meeting with relatives and, and just getting to see people you haven't seen in a while. In the midst of all that, we want to encourage you to keep the Lord first place. Keep God first place in everything that you do. We're constantly praying for you, for your protection as you travel, for, your, uh, for just peace uh, in your relationships, in your family, uh, for God's guidance, for God to continue to speak to you and for those that are navigating challenging times and seasons. And there's quite a number of people that are in that situation that are just going through, uh, you know, changing seasons and navigating the challenges that come with that. We constantly pray for you guys as well. Believe me, uh, we're touched with the feeling of your infirmities. We know what that looks like, what that is like, and uh, we're here to support you through that season praying for you and bringing you uh, a word that will encourage you, that will impel you forward to keep on moving in the direction that God has for your life. And so please be encouraged, stay, uh, stay in faith and stay uh, on God's side through everything that life may throw at you. Here is Busola joining us and bringing a, a word to us of encouragement and greeting this morning. Praise God. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here today. Thankful for God's goodness and grace and thankful for you being a part of what God is doing in our lives. It's always a joy to be able to bring a word of encouragement, especially when you know there are people on the other side who are eager and cheering you on so god bless you if you just turn with me today to the book of second timothy and we'll look in chapter one and in verse seven it says for god has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity but of power love and self-discipline 
I like to read the amplified version. It says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Wow, wow, wow. Don't we so need this in this day and age that we live in? I, I know that the devil's plan more often than not is to bring fear into our hearts so that he can intimidate us and hinder us from moving forward with what God wants for us to do and has for us to do. And if we will take the bait, then we become stuck in our situation and circumstances and we're unable to move forward. But every time you put yourself in remembrance of what God has said in his word, it helps you to be able to make a steady forward progress. It helps to propel you into all that God has for you. I don't know where you are in your life right now. I don't know what challenge you're going through. I don't know what obstacle is before you. I don't know what um, situation is before you that seems larger than life and you feel like you can move forward. You feel like this is too much for me. You're afraid to take the next step. It's a new season in your life. It's a it's a it's a it's a new season and it's like you feel stuck you're afraid what's the future gonna hold am i gonna make it am i gonna be able to do it do i have what it takes is this what i really need to do come on move forward god said to moses to say to the children of israel he said tell my people to go forward so it's time you put fear on the on the back burner and move forward with faith in your heart pushing through with what you believe god is calling you to do and you will see yourself excel it may be tough starting out. It may be challenging, but I tell you what, God is with you and he's going to see you through. So you don't have to be afraid or because of the challenges or because of the apparent opposition or the apparent difficulty that it seems like it's going to come in you moving forward, in you taking a step of faith, in you stepping into that next season. We always have seasons in our life. And seasons come with changes. We don't like changes. But if we're ever to move forward and advance into what God has for us, then it's absolutely important that we understand that we have to take steps, baby steps, one step at a time, one day at a time into fulfilling and getting into what God has for you. But the devil will try to stop you with fear and you have to stand your ground in faith and say no to him. That's his plan, is to bring fear, to bring intimidation, and make you feel like, I can't do this. If you remember the story of Gideon and the people that were with him at the time, they were threshing wheat in, they, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were threshing, um, what were they threshing? Wheat, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was. He, he was, he was threshing, threshing wheat in a wine press. In a wine press. Why? Because of fear. He was afraid. And that wasn't going to help him. That, I mean, it was almost like what he was doing was practically futile. But that is always the devil's ploy. That is its, its game plan is to ensure that whatever it is that God wants us to do, that we don't move forward with it. He'll put you down. I'll tell the story real quick. I'll tell the story real quick before my husband starts this word, because God's put it on my heart to share. I remember many years ago when I was in college, there was a situation on campus whereby you had a lot of cultists, people that were a terrorist group that were moving around campus and they were terrorizing people and putting fear and harm into them. And they were actually, I mean, they were going around to steal, to rape, to cut people up with a machete, and to do all kinds of things. And so there was pandemonium all over campus. Everybody was afraid. People were in fear. They were afraid to go out. They were afraid to come in. And especially when you get affected, then the fear becomes even greater. I'm not going to have time to share the full story, mm -hmm. but just to make it short, I had an encounter where on a particular day, two of two, 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 um, young, two, two men came over to um, the church building where I was at, and one of them had a mask on, and the other one had a gun. And you know, the one put the gun, and I opened the door, thinking it was 
a church member coming over into the church and they put a gun to my head and said, we're looking for so-so and so. Do you have money? Do you have this? And I started to say to them, the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. I don't have anything. Anyway, they came in, ransacked the place, stole some things and they left. After that experience, fear became my um, partner, so to say. <laughs> you never want fear to be your partner. But I was filled with so much fear that I was afraid to do anything at all. I was afraid. I, I, I lived in my my bathroom was not inside my room. It was in a house and it was in a hallway. I was afraid to step out of the room to go to the bathroom, afraid to go in, afraid to come out. I was afraid to go to school. I was afraid to go to class. I couldn't do anything. I became paralyzed with fear. I became a prisoner in my own home. And then it got to a point where I was like, I can't continue to live my life like this. It's not okay. This is not God's plan for me. This is not what God wants me to do. This is not God's perfect will. God has more. And God has not given me the spirit of fear, of timidity, of cowardice. No. But he's given me the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So I went into the word of God and started to meditate on scriptures concerning what God has said, concerning faith, concerning his ability to protect me, and concerning fear. And as I started to make God bigger than my situation, the fear started to leave a little bit at a time until I got to a point where I believed that if anyone tried to attack me, the angels of God were going to come down from heaven and strike them dead. That's what you have to do concerning your situation. You need to confront that fear. You need to say no to everything that the devil is trying to use to hinder you from moving forward and making a positive progress into what God has for you. You don't have to be afraid. God is with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm with you from now to the end of the world. He says you are inscribed on the palm of his hand. He's looking out for you. He's your father and you're his child. He's constantly watching over you to make sure that you're okay. And concerning that new um, season, that job, that challenge, that change that you need to make, take that step of faith. If you miss, make a mistake and you fail, then you retreat your step and you go back again. God never said we're never going to fall. He said a righteous man will fall seven times and rise up again. So if you're wondering, there's someone that is wondering about to make a decision and you're wondering, what if I take that step? What if that's not what God wants me to do? What if I make a mistake? What if I fail? Fail and get up. Fail and get up. It doesn't say we're never going to fail. Fail and get up and pick yourself back up again and keep moving forward. God bless you. Praise God. <laughs> I guess we can end the broadcast. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But God, I believe someone needed to hear that God this is morning. Good. I believe Amen. so too. So thank God for that. Uh, word of encouragement. Uh, this morning, um, you know, it, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Take heed to what you've heard. Um, get rid of fear. Put fear behind you. And uh, just put the Lord before you. The psalmist said, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be moved. So don't set fear before you. Don't set what may go wrong, what may not go right before you. Set the Lord before you. And that's how fear will you know, find its way away from your life. Praise God. Thank God for that word. Uh, thank God for the encouragement of that word. And um, thank God you're here today uh, to receive from God. I believe you already have. But, you know, there's a, a, a brief uh, exhortation I have for you this morning. And we'll go into it. But before we do, before we pray and start this morning, I want to welcome you once again. Uh, for, thanks, thank you for joining us live on Facebook on Ambassade Live every Friday morning, 8 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Eastern, um, 6.30 p.m. in India, 2 p.m. in the UK and in uh, West Africa, Nigeria, where we have viewers joining us in different parts of uh, the world. Uh, we welcome you and thank you for joining us. Please mark, the, mark that date and time down and join us every Friday for this broadcast. Also, please share uh, the feed, share it with your friends, your co-workers, your your brothers and sisters in the Lord, uh, so that they can come and partake of a word from the Lord, a word of encouragement, a word of truth that will establish them in their faith and help them continue to move forward in God. So thanks for that. Praise God. Start a watch party right now. 
join us. Uh, call people up. So, um, Prasadi is back on. It's on Prasadi Live. Log in, log in. If you're able to, um, we'll appreciate that. God is good. Let's start with a word of prayer this morning. Father, we're so grateful yes. for this beautiful day that you have made and given to us. Thank you, Father, for the gift of life. Thank you for uh, waking us up this morning, for those of us who just woke up, uh, for your mercies that are new every day. And this day, Father God, we receive your mercy and your grace afresh. Thank you, Father God, for the plans you have for us. They are for good and not for evil. They are to prosper and not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future, an expected end, the end that you have scripted for us. For you said our days were written in your book before we lived a single one. Help us to align ourselves through your word and by your spirit with the plans that you have for us. Not walking in fear or intimidation, but walking by faith and courageously moving forward into all you have prepared for us. Thank you, Father, for everyone logged on today. And for everyone that will listen to this broadcast, I pray, Lord God, that your word will pierce deep into their hearts. Holy Spirit, that you will quicken that word in their hearts. Give them, Lord God, revelation knowledge, understanding of this truth. Let it not just be another word they've heard, but let it be something, Lord God, that explodes in their hearts and that brings wisdom and direction to them, that infuses them with courage, that infuses them, Father God, with, with, with the ability to continue yes. on the path that you have created for them. Thank you, precious Father. We bless you today. Holy Spirit, have your way. Yes, we yield ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you for that encouragement, babe. You can go dab your nose now. <laughs> Praise God. Mr. So will join us later on as we wrap up the broadcast to speak a, a word of encouragement to you and um, to pray for you at the end of the broadcast. Praise God. Um, I have uh, a message for you, for those of you who look at the title that is typed in there. I've titled today's message, In the Middle of the Sea. In the Middle of the Sea. And I'll try to get this across as, as um, you know, simply and as quickly as I can so that we don't take too long today. But it's, a, it's an important message that I have for you today. Um, coming from just time with the Lord, meditating on the things of God, and um, also uh, being mindful of uh, the, the seasons of life and the times that we're living in. Uh, these messages are designed to help you stay on track. The Bible says that in the latter days, many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, if people can, for people to give heed to doctrines of devils and seducing spirits, that means they're listening to them. We provide this as a resource for you to listen to uh, the Holy Spirit <laughs> and to the doctrines of the Almighty God, to the Word of God, to give you wisdom, strategic uh, wisdom and knowledge for you to keep moving forward, not to be deceived, not to be, not to be intimidated, not to be distracted, not to be, you know, sidetracked, so that you will get to your destination that God indeed has prepared for you. So the message is in the middle of the sea. And I want to read to us today a passage from the book of Exodus, uh, it, Exodus chapter 14 and in verses 13 to 31. Exodus 14, it's a bit of a long read, but then we're going to talk about it and draw out uh, some virtue from those words to uh, speak to us this morning. Exodus chapter 14 from verses 13 to 31. It's a familiar story. The backstory is this. Uh, the children of Israel had been in captivity in Egypt for 430 years. And finally, God raises up a deliverer for them in the person of Moses, and he sends Moses to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Uh, we know the story. Pharaoh was hard-hearted. He didn't want to listen. He decided that he was able to take on the Almighty God, the Great I Am. Uh, who is your God that I should obey him? Can you imagine 
a, a man taking God on. Well, he uh, paid a heavy price for that, him and the nation of Egypt that had held the Israelites in captivity. And through a series of uh, mighty manifestations of God's power and glory, eventually Pharaoh was convinced uh, to let the people go. Hallelujah. Uh, and so uh, on, the, on, the, on the strength of the uh, blood of the lamb applied to the doorposts of their lives and the Passover, Praise God. Good morning, everyone that's joined us. Pastor Fred from um, uh, New Jersey, Sister Maribel. God bless you both. Good to see you. Hallelujah. On the strength of, uh, uh, of the blood of the Lamb, uh, and uh, the angel of death passes over them, and they begin their journey out of their past into the glorious future God has for them, or God had for them, out of captivity into freedom out of bondage into liberty, out of, out of uh, sin into, into, into righteousness, out of a life of slavery into a life of, of a sonship as children of God. And so the journey began and God brought them out. He didn't bring them out empty. He brought them out also with silver and with gold. He says there was not weak or feeble among their tribes. He blessed them and brought them out. And the journey began. And as they began on the journey, now the story goes that God began to lead them. And I want you to take it to these things. I'm saying God began to lead them. Uh, and, you know, by a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire, by the angel of the Lord that went ahead of them, representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our shepherd, glory to God. And so he begins to lead them. And he, God, God decided not to lead them in a particular way. Because how I many know God knows better than we know? He says, lest they see war and turn back to Egypt. So God said he would not lead them this way. He chose to lead them a different way. And that way that God led them brought them right in front of the Red Sea. Glory to God. In the meantime, Pharaoh had decided to harden his heart again and decided to muster up all the elite forces of Egypt, the chariots and the, and the armies and the forces, and to go and bring God's people back into captivity. You know, sometimes the devil just does not learn. <laughs> you know, he just does not learn. He just feels like he can take on God over and over again. But I may know he will always lose. And the, the, the losses get more catastrophic for the devil the more he dogs your trail. And, and, and comes after you. Take heed to what I'm saying. So the, the, the enemy began to chase them. And here they were right in front of the Red Sea. So what did they do? The people panicked. And they began to fret. And they began to be fearful. Because they saw an obstacle that was between their past and the, and the future God had for them. There was this huge obstacle. This seemingly insurmountable obstacle. This seemingly uh, uh, impossible situation. But remember, God led them to it. And we'll get to that. So let's read in Exodus chapter 14 and uh, from verse 13 to 31. If you can stay with us today for the entire broadcast, I encourage you to do so. Uh, put, put your earpiece on. I want you to listen to what God is saying this morning. It is very important. You will be blessed and encouraged. Exodus 14, uh, verse 13, uh, from verse 13 to 31, very quickly in the New King James, it says this, And Moses said to the people, after all this fear was going on, he says to the people, Do not be afraid, like Busola was saying a few minutes ago. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Verse 15, And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. That, for me, is the anchor verse in that chapter 14. It happens to be almost exactly the middle verse in that chapter. I call it the anchor verse of that whole chapter. And the Lord, verse 15, And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? 
tell the children of Israel to go forward. Verse 16, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea, on dry ground. Verse 17, and I indeed will harden the heart of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Verse 19, and the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and darkness to the one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other all the night. Take note of that, all the night. So this was happening at night. I just want to highlight certain things to you. This was happening at night. Verse 21, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left hand. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea. All Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen into the midst of the sea. Now it came to pass in the morning, watch, that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians, and he took off their chariot wheels, so that they drove them with difficulty, and the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Straight out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians on their chariots and on their horsemen. Verse 27, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth, while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the, the chariots and horsemen and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained i'll keep reading but notice this that everything that's been dogging your trail and pursuing you up till now there's a reason they were pursuing you up till now is because they were pursuing you to their demise <laughs> morning is about to come for you and you will watch and see all your enemies that have been dogging your trail be drowned glory to god hallelujah amen let's keep reading verse 30 and so the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. What a story. I mean, it's so rich. It's so, if you sit down to, to, to meditate upon this story, there's so much in there. I'll try and address some of this. But the message today is this, that as we walk, walk through on our journey of purpose, on our journey of faith, on our journey of freedom into all that God has prepared for us, we will encounter situations, obstacles, challenges that seem to stand in the way between our past and the future that God has for us. And can I say something to you today? Between your past, your yesterday, and the future God has for you, there will always be something that you have to pass through. Glory to God. Between the future freedom, the future healing, the future abundance, the future open doors, the future wealthy place, the future breakthrough, the future victory that God has for you manifested, there will be something that will seemingly be in the way. But the truth is, is as long as you keep walking by faith, trusting God and taking steps moving forward, you may find yourself in the midst of the situation right now. The reality is that 
you are not in front, but you are right now. Hear me loud and clear. Right now, you are in the middle of the Red Sea. <laughs> if you've kept on believing God and kept on moving forward, taking steps of faith, you are right now in the very middle of the Red Sea. You are in the middle of it. What does that mean? You see, passing through the Red Sea is not this romantic, you know, uh, beautiful thing that maybe the Disney movies or, or movie makers uh, have kind of tried to create for us in their imagination. It, it's not... It was. It, it's not a, a romantic thing where the the water looks like an aquarium, and you know, uh, you know, it's just so pretty and all that. Can I say something to you? It was a rough journey of faith. Passing through the Red Sea was a rough journey of faith. So, if you are on a rough journey of faith right now, you are passing through your Red Sea. You are right now in the midst. Of and passing through your Red Sea. Can I highlight some things from the story we read? Remember, this journey, it was at night. It was at night. And only the Lord's presence in the pillar of fire was their only source of light at this time. Not only was it at night, they were in the very depths of the sea. It was dark, and only the Lord's presence was the source of light that they had. Maybe you are in that place right now where everything looks, it looks like it's, it's, it's the midnight hour. It's dark, it's, and the only thing that's keeping you going is the, the presence of the Lord. The only source of hope, the only source of light in your life right now is just Jesus. <laughs> if that is you, you are in the middle of, of the Red Sea. You are in the middle of the Red Sea. I hope you're tracking with me here. It was at night. The journey through the Red Sea was at night. I found that notable. Why didn't they cross during the day? <laughs> it was at night. So that the only source of light, the only source of hope, the only source of encouragement, the only source, the only thing that kept them going was the presence of the Lord with them. The presence of Jesus, the angel that went ahead of them in a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud. That was their only source of hope, their only source of light. If that is where you are, you're in a good place. Because that means God has already parted the sea and you're walking through the Red Sea. Secondly, the Bible says that a strong east wind was blowing to keep the waters parted. A strong east wind. Not a gentle breeze, a strong east wind that was blowing to keep the waters parted and be a wall on either side. So it's not just a so if you're in the middle of a situation where it just seems like there are winds that are blowing, <laughs> it seems very stormy and windy, and things are just seem so unsettled. <laughs> You are in the midst of the Red Sea, walking through. Winds of adversity, winds of challenges, winds of problems blowing around you. Those very winds are what God is using to keep the sea parted as you walk through. Are you listening to me? So don't believe all this, you know, uh, you know, Disney movie kind of depiction of passing through the Red Sea. It was a tumultuous windy dark time and it was only by faith that they kept moving forward and the bible says also that they were walking on dry ground that's notable that they were walking on that dry ground why they were not working walking on murky ground that they will be stuck in that would be difficult for them to walk the ground was dry but can i say something to you if you imagine the bottom of the sea that they were walking through was not a flat black top <laughs> express road. <laughs> oh, listen to me today. It wasn't a flat black top express road. 
It wasn't the desert that was flat that they could see. It was the bottom of the sea. And if you know anything from National Geographic, or if you've ever been to the ocean, the bottom of the sea is not a smooth, flat surface. It is a rough, it is a rough terrain with ups and downs, with bends and turns, with boulders and things that you have to navigate around. Are you listening to me? So even though you're walking on dry ground, thank God that the ground is dry so you don't have an excuse that I cannot move. You don't have an excuse that I am stuck. I can't take a step. My feet are stuck in this mud. No, the ground is dry. God dry the ground. Why? So that you can keep walking. Hallelujah. Oh, please listen to me. Listen to me today. It's not smooth. It's not straight. It's not flat. But the ground is dry so that you can keep on moving. So right now, if you're in a place where the going is kind of rough, filled with a lot of ups and downs and turns and bends, guess what? You are in the midst of the Red Sea. Glory to God. I hope somebody is listening to me today and catching, catching, uh, 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 catching sight of what I'm trying to present to you. Amen? Next, there was a wall of water <laughs> towering on either side of them. Now, I'm not talking about a little bit of water like, you know, ankle deep. It was a wall. Imagine passing through the midst of the sea. A wall of water. They could not see the top of this wall. Neither could they see the top of that wall. That's how deep they were. There was a wall of water towering on either side of them. And I promise you, this wasn't something that was cool. <laughs> It was something that was like, they were like, wow, this is awesome, man. This is cool, man. No, this was something that was fearful. <laughs> that was a, it was a fearful walk. So they had to do it by faith. Listen carefully to me. At the back of their mind, I'm sure they must have been thinking, man, if this water should come down Man, we are done for. <laughs> if this wall should come crashing down, we are done for. They had to stay in faith all the way through and just keep on walking until they got to the other side. And maybe you are in that season where you don't understand how you are surviving. And it seems like, man, any minute, things can just come crashing down. Any moment, Things can just collapse around you. You can't even see be, you can't see above the challenges that you're going through. You can't see above the challenges you're going through. It's surrounding you on the left and on the right. And here you are in the middle. You can't see above it. And if man, if <laughs> if anything should happen, everything will just come crashing down. If that's where you are right now, you are in the midst of the Red Sea that God has parted for you. And lastly, remember, the Egyptian army and the forces of Pharaoh, they were chasing after them. <laughs> they were chasing after them. Running after them. But listen, God ensured that they did not catch up to them. That they did not what? Catch up to them. So what picture am I painting for you today? The title of my message is in the midst of the sea. And many times people are in the midst of the Red Sea that God has parted for them and is leading them through, but they don't even realize it. They're in the midst of the Red Sea that God has led them to parted for them because they kept moving forward and they are walking through but they don't even realize it are you listening to me because it looks dark it looks like it's night time 
and the only hope you have is Jesus, the light of the world. There's winds of adversity blowing around you. The going is rough, ups and downs, turns and twists. You can't see above the problem you're in. You can't see be you can't see forward, you can't see above it. Well, that's okay. As long as you can see the shepherd, <laughs> that's all you need. And I'll talk about that in a minute. The going is rough. Ups and downs are there. Turns and bends are there. And sometimes we're in the midst of this. We just think, oh, there's problem here and problem there. But what I'm showing you, what I'm highlighting to you right now is that you are in the very midst of the Red Sea. You are in the very midst of a sea, a situation that God has parted for you and he's leading you through. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. It seems like the enemy is still dogging my trail. The wall of water is so high, I can't see above it. The problems around me are so huge, I can't see above them. It seems like there's no end to them. They're just towering above me. They're beyond what I can surmount. I can't even see past them. You are in the midst of the Red Sea that God has parted for you. Amen? So once again, what are the signs that you are in the midst of the Red Sea? Number one, you have continued to move forward. You've continued to move forward. That means if you've continued to move forward, that means you are not stuck on the banks of the sea. You are in the midst of the sea that God has parted for you. Number two, you have continued to walk by faith and trusting in God. You are in the midst of the sea. You don't know how you are still alive. You don't know, you can't explain how you are still surviving. You can't even explain how everything has not come crashing down on you. If that's where you are, you are in the midst of the Red Sea. <laughs> Hallelujah. The going is rough right now. The going is rough, just twists and turns, ups and downs. And I don't see an end to it. You are in the midst of the Red Sea. Everything looks dark. And the only hope I have right now is Jesus. The only thing that is keeping me going now is just Jesus. You are in the midst of the Red Sea. Are you, are you, are you, are you following me? It feels like man, any moment now, things can just collapse around me and I'll be done for. You are in the midst of the Red Sea. Can I encourage you this morning? You are doing an amazing thing and you don't even realize it. You are walking through the sea and you don't even realize it. Hallelujah. I just want you to take a moment and just ponder on that for a minute. Whether you are going through drug recovery and the going is rough and the challenge is great and it feels like, man, everything is going to cave in, you are passing through the sea. Or you are going through recovery from a sickness or an illness and the pain is there. And, you know it, 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 you know, it feels like, man, am I going to make it? And the only thing keeping you going is just Jesus. You are in the middle of the Red Sea. Or you are going through a very difficult financial situation right now. And it seems like any moment now, you're going to run out. And things are just going to collapse around you. You are in the midst of the Red Sea. <laughs> or you are in a very tumultuous family situation, relationship situation, where it seems like things are just going to fall apart and things are going to collapse. Guess what? You are in the midst of the Red Sea. Whatever you are going through right now, a Red Sea has been parted and God is bringing you through. Are you listening to me? And remember, God brought you to it. Glory to God. And that's the other part that many people find difficult to understand. And I want to highlight from this story right here. Many people find it difficult to understand that. Can I ask you a question? Do you ever believe for one moment that God has left or forsaken you? No. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. Your steps are ordered of the Lord. 
where you are right now is not a shock or surprise to God. <laughs> Indeed, he's brought you to it because he intends to bring you through it. Why did God bring the Israelites to the banks of the Red Sea? For them to die? For the enemy to overtake them? Why did he part the Red Sea and lead them through it? For them to die in the midst of the sea? No. If God brought you to it, he is going to bring you through it. Indeed, he is bringing you through it right now. Glory to God. Are you listening to me? He is bringing you through it right now. He did not make a mistake when he led them there. Remember, they were being led by the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. So he's the one that was leading them. They didn't just go. So if you have been following the Lord, trusting God, obeying God, being led by the Spirit of God, and you find yourself in these situations we've described, you are in the middle of the Red Sea that God brought you to, and he's going to bring you through so that some things that have dug your trail, some enemies can drown in that sea, and you can pass over into what God has prepared for you. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are in the midst of it. He fully intends to bring you through it by a demonstration of his awesome power and glory. Can you hear me this morning? God is bringing you through it and he fully intends to bring you all the way through by a mighty demonstration of his power and his glory. All he needs from you is one thing. One thing. And what is that one thing? Tell the children of Israel that they keep moving forward. Hallelujah. That you keep what? Going forward. That is a prerequisite that God has for you right now. And indeed, if I'm speaking to you and these things pertain to you, you are in the midst of the sea because you kept moving forward. The reason God parted the sea, the reason you find yourself where you are, is because you kept moving forward. Glory to God. Please hear me loud and clear today. The Lord will part the sea. He will supply the grace that you need to walk through that sea. But all he needs from you is that you keep taking steps of faith and keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Don't get into the midst of the sea. Look around you and say, Aribab, ribab. look at this, man. This is too much for me. And stop. No. You're going to the other side. Keep moving forward. God has not forsaken you. In fact, he's right there with you. Keep moving forward. You may not see how you're going to make it through. That's okay. Just stay focused on who is leading you and what he has said. <laughs> is somebody hearing me today? Just stay focused. Meditation on what he has said and focus on who is the one that is leading you. Keep your eyes on the light of the world, Jesus. Keep your eyes on him who is your good shepherd. You may not see the way, but keep your eyes on the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you're in that place, I just don't see a way out of this. I can't figure out how to get out of this. I'm not sure I'm going to make it out of this. One thing you must do, keep your eyes on the shepherd. Keep your eyes on the pillar of cloud and fire. Keep your eyes on the one who is leading you. Don't put your eyes on the wind and the waves and the rough terrain. Keep your eyes on him who is leading you and keep following him. He's going to lead you out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And since you're already in the midst of the sea, guess what? Keep moving forward. Keep walking by faith. Keep walking by faith. You're already in the middle of the sea. Don't stop there now. Don't give up now. Don't give in now. Just keep moving forward by faith. With the grace of God, 
Keep moving forward till you get to the other side. You are not going to camp out in the midst of the sea. You are not going to stop in the midst of the sea. You are going to keep moving forward because you are coming out on the other side. Glory to God. Keep on walking by faith. The journey may seem long. It may seem like I've been on this track now for a long time. Well, the sea is not a short walk. Keep moving. The sea also, even though it's not a short walk, it's not an indefinite journey. It's not a journey that doesn't end. There will be the other side. You will get to the other side. Keep moving forward. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope somebody is hearing me today. And some thoughts to remember. Let me just get through this real quick. Some thoughts to remember as you pass through. And the massive message today, you're going to pass through. You know, many times we want God to take us to something. We want God to take us to things. But more often than not, God is going to bring us through some things to get us to certain things. <laughs> God will bring you to a place, get you through it, to get you to where he has for you. To pass from your past to your future, you got to pass through something. Many of us will prefer not to pass through. We will prefer just to get to. But I'm saying to you today, there's a passing through that takes place. You know, in, the Psalm, in Psalm 23, uh, that famous shepherd's psalm, it's a beautiful psalm, and many of us even know it by heart. But it goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. We love that part of the psalm. Hallelujah. In fact, most of us will prefer if they edited verse 4 out of Psalm 23. <laughs> We would prefer if Psalm 4 was edited out of Psalm 23. And what does verse 4 say? It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. <laughs> Pastor Fred said, you don't tiptoe through the tulips. You got to walk through something. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Yea, though I walk through. By the way, who is leading you through that valley? Is it not the same shepherd that led you to green pastures beside still waters that was restoring your soul, that leads you through paths of righteousness? But if you are passing from one season of your life to another, sometimes you got to walk through. Glory to God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In that valley, it is dark. In that valley, it seems like there are things that want to kill you that are drugging your trail. You are surrounded by adversity. You are surrounded by winds of adversity. Enemies dogging your trail. It's dark. But guess what? Keep your eyes on the shepherd. Don't take your eyes off him. You may not see the way, but he sees the way. You may not know how to get out, but he's the one leading you. Glory to God. Sometimes we want to be our own shepherd. We want to be our own shepherd. We want to know everything. We want to know how it's all going to work out. Know how this is going to pan out. Know how we're going to get out of this. You don't have to know it all. Just keep your eyes on the shepherd and keep following him. He knows the way. He, he will lead you out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just like the Israelites just had to keep their eyes on Moses. They didn't see a way above the water. It was dark. They, there was no way to the left or to the right. All they had to do was keep going forward. And when you're passing through that valley of the shadow of death, guess what? You don't see a way out. It's dark. It's terrifying. It's foreboding. Just keep your eyes on the shepherd. And remember that he will never leave you he will never forsake you. He's right there. 
you train your eyes on him discipline yourself to keep your focus on him when you're going through the midst of the sea amen his rod which is his word to instruct encourage correct and protect you that's the rod and his staff which is his spirit to lead to guide and to comfort you they will comfort you through that season what am i saying when you're passing through man the rod of god which is the word of god is there to encourage you to correct you to protect you to instruct you and his staff is there i like the word staff because it connotes someone who is who is working the staff the staff of that company well god has given us a staff called the paracletos the holy ghost the one called alongside to help he is our guide he is our comforter he is our counselor the rod and staff the word of god the spirit of god are right there to comfort you as you pass through don't forsake the word when you're passing through don't forsake the holy ghost when you're passing through hold on to the word of god yield to the spirit of god as you're passing through glory to god they will bring you comfort they will bring you strength they'll bring you encouragement bring you correction they will help you know how to navigate don't go here go that way no turn here there's a rock there don't go there there's a ditch there don't pass there as you pass through the bottom of the sea glory to god his rod and his staff they comfort you keep your eyes on the shepherd the lord jesus stay with him keep your eyes on him hold on to the word of god and yield to the spirit of god his rod and staff that are comforting you through that season are you listening to me please take heed to this truth today it is very vital that you realize this you are in the middle of a miracle you don't even know it many times we we only see the miracle after it has manifested in fullness after we have come to the end of it we only see the miracle listen carefully to this many times we only see the miracle after we've come to the end of it we don't realize that we're in the middle of a miracle right now friend you are in the middle of a miracle right now you are passing through the Red Sea that God has parted for you. Glory to God. But the truth and reality is this. When you are passing through and when you're in the middle of a miracle, it doesn't look like a miracle. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look pretty. It doesn't look, you know, like man, anything is happening. In fact, it looks fearful. It looks, it looks terrifying. <laughs> but you're in the middle of a miracle. Because you didn't get yourself there. God is leading you through. You're not going to get yourself out. God is going to lead you out. You are in the midst. Say with me wherever you are. I am in the middle of a miracle. Come on, say it. I am in the middle of a miracle. I am passing through the Red Sea. I am passing through to the other side. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are. If you're believing God for healing, you're in the middle of a miracle. Keep moving forward by faith. You're believing God for breakthrough in your finances. You are in the middle of a miracle. Keep moving forward by faith. Glory to God. You're believing God for breakthrough in your business, in your, in, in your ministry, in your job, in your career. Keep moving forward by faith. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Hold on to the word. Yield to the spirit. You are in the middle of a miracle. God is bringing you out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, say one more time. I am in the middle of a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Don't let's appreciate the miracle after it is over. And we look back and say, whoa, look what God did. No, let us realize that when God is doing it, we're in the midst of it right now. Somebody listening to me, you're in the midst of a financial miracle. Glory to God. God is bringing you through. Yes, it's rough right now. Winds of adversity are blowing. It looks dark. You don't see a way out of your problem. But guess what? The shepherd is leading you. The light of the world is leading you. Keep moving forward. You are in the middle of a miracle. You are coming out on the other side. Glory to God. And everything that has dogged your trail, try to hold you in bondage, try to keep you down, try to hold you back. They're going to drown in the midst of that sea. Weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming in the morning. Your morning of joy is coming. You're going to look back in that morning of joy and you see 
Pharaoh and all his hosts drowned in the sea. The things I used to hold you back will be a distant memory. The Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. The things that have dogged your trail, the things that have held you back, the things that have, that have persistently kind of been a problem, you will see them no more. Keep moving forward. Glory to God. You are in the midst of the sea. You are in the midst of the miracle. In the midst of the sea there just means you are in the middle of your miracle. Don't give up. Don't stop in the middle of the sea. Uh -uh. Why would you stop in the middle of the sea? Why would you stop in the middle of the Red Sea? No, you are supposed to get to the other side. Keep moving forward. What's the point of walking by faith all this time if you're just going to stop? Keep moving forward. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I hope somebody is getting blessed today. Come on, say to yourself once again, I am in the middle of a miracle. God is leading me. If he brought me to it and he's leading me through it, he will bring me out of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Just like the Israelites came out on the other side of the Red Sea. You will come out on the other side of your miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But as you're passing through, there's another thought I want to share with you. As you're passing through, <laughs> make sure in keeping your eyes on the Lord, do what he does. What do I mean by that? In the book of Mark chapter 4, we can't read it. But you know the story. Mark chapter 4 from verse 35 to 41 is the story of when Jesus and his disciples got in the boat and he gave them a word. Let us go over to the other side. <laughs> now who instructed them to go to the other side? Jesus did. Jesus did. Was he on the boat with them? Yes, he was. But then as it began, the storm started and became really bad. Say the wind was blowing and the storm was raging. Come here. Do you think that storm took Jesus by surprise? Absolutely not. He knew the storm would be there. Amen? And the disciples, they tried their best with all their experience as fishermen, as seafaring men. They tried all they knew to do to see a way out, to figure out, to navigate that storm. But they could not in their ability. It was beyond their ability. It was beyond their capacity. They were experienced fishermen. They were people of the sea. But this storm was beyond their ability. Sometimes you will go through things that are beyond your ability. That the Lord told you, let's go to the other side. And now you're in the midst of the ocean and the sea and the storm is raging. You're in the middle of a miracle. But you know what happened to the disciples? They lost sight of who the Lord was and of what he has said. They lost sight of who was on the boat with them and of what he had said. They lost sight of it. And sometimes, you know, we can have the Lord with us. He's living in us. We declare it. The Lord, if the Lord before me, who can be against me? Jesus is living inside of me. We can declare it. But sometimes we lose sight of that. We lose sight of it. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the sea, we lose sight of who is with us and what he said. Who was with them? The Lord of the universe. Jesus, their Lord and Master, was right there with them. What had he said? Let us go to the other side. If only they had held fast to what he said, let us go to the other side. And they had not, if only they had kept held on to what he said, let us go to the other side. And they had retained or kept in sight the one who was with them. They would not have been panicking. They would have been doing what he was doing. All they needed to do was to keep their eyes on him. But they kept their eyes on the what? On the storm. <laughs> if they had kept their eyes on him, listen, listen to this. They would have seen him that he was not worried. He was not anxious. He was not troubled. In fact, he was at rest, sleeping on a pillow. And can I say something to you? 
Whatever you see your Lord doing, do that. <laughs> Whatever you see your Lord doing, do that. How do you do that? Whatever you see in the word of God, do. If they had looked at Jesus and said, look at Jesus, man. He's not troubled. He's not worried. He's asleep. You know what they would have done? They would have said, man, if he's sleeping, let me chill, man. What's my problem? <laughs> if I go down, he goes down. But he ain't going down. Amen. So why should I? Why should I be discouraged? Amen. You remember that song? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be so lonely? I long for heaven as well. When Jesus is my portion, he's right there with you. My constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. What you going to do? I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he's watching me. Amen. Keep your eyes on the one who is on the boat with you. Amen. What he's doing, you do. Is he fretting and pulling his hair out and scared and afraid? No, he ain't. He's sleeping and I rest on a pillow. So chill, man. That's why Jesus said to them, how is it that you have no faith? Can I say something to you? The only reason Jesus rebuked the wind and the waves was just to steal the fear in the disciples' heart. Amen. Not because the storm was going to take them down. Somebody hear me. It was only just to steal the fear in the disciples' hearts. That's the only reason he rebuked the wind and the waves. Not because that storm had the ability to take them down. The storm doesn't have the ability to take you down. Amen. I said the storm doesn't have the ability to take you down. Amen. Jesus is on the boat with you. Do what he is doing. Rest, man. Relax, man. Be at peace, man. Sing for joy. Sing for his praises, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on him. Glory to God. The Lord is with you right now. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He brought you to this point and he's going to lead you through. Amen. Don't be anxious. Don't be worried. Don't be fearful. Amen. Just keep on what? Walking. You know what you have to do though? You have to cast down thoughts and imaginations that don't line up with the word of God. We're going to die. Don't you care that we perish? Lord, don't you care that we perish? You have to cast down thoughts and imaginations. Mm -hmm. Don't entertain them. Don't revolve them around your mind. Don't focus on them. Listen, it may be tough to do, but you have to do it. The Bible says, casting down all imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Amen. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Man, if you get into the midst of the sea and then you begin to look around like Peter and say, Hare Babri, and begin to say the wrong things. <laughs> Are you listening today, folks? You begin to say, the wrong, no, keep your eyes on him who called you. Keep your eyes on him who said, let us go to the other side. Keep your eyes on him that said, just keep moving forward. Amen. And keep doing what? Moving, moving forward. That's all, listen, that's all God wants from you. That is all the Lord needs from you. Amen. Is that you keep moving forward by faith. faith. That's all. You're not going to bring yourself out of the mess you're in. He's leading you out. Amen. Keep moving forward by faith. But we want to control things. We want to see the end. We want to see above the waves. We want to see above the sea. We want to see what's on the other side. You don't need to see what's on the other side. All you need to see is who? The one who is leading you. Keep your eyes on him. He will get you to the other side. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Keep your focus on him. Keep your focus on what he said and keep moving forward. I have a quick story to share. Many years ago, <clears throat> you know, when in, in uh, Calcutta, running a Bible school, and God had blessed us with a wonderful building. And we used that building for several years. You've heard me share testimonies about it. We used that building for several years, but then a time came that that building was our past. Because the owner said, well, guess what? 
you have to vacate this place. You have to move. You have to go. And so, between our past and the future God had for us, we had to pass through something. And so what happened? It was a very difficult time for us. Tumultuous. We had to pack out of that building, pack all our stuff. We had to put some of them in storage. We didn't see how we were going to move forward. We didn't see what God had prepared for us. We didn't see what was next. But we had to keep moving forward. forward. Some people were saying to us, how are you going to have Bible school? I guess maybe you have to suspend school. You have to stop the school. How do I stop in the middle of the sea? God brought me to this point. <laughs> and he said, just keep moving oh. forward. So that's exactly what we did. We kept moving forward. We advertised for the next se se session. And you know where we had our Bible school? We had our Bible school under some trees. Outside in the open, we put some tables and chairs outside under some trees we just put a piece of tarp tied them to the trees and we're having bible school outside tell my children that they move forward and we were having bible school outside chickens were coming into the classroom dogs were walking through the classroom we had monkeys. Monkeys were coming, passing through, and they stopped. I guess they were they wanted to hear the word of God. He was so anointed. They stopped right on the on the building that was next, and they were observing what we were doing. We were exposed to the elements, but we were in the middle of a miracle. We were in the middle of the sea that Amen. God had parted for us, and we just kept moving forward. We had a batch of students that year, and I promise you, we did almost that entire session outside four months in the open we had makeshift offices our office was the bedroom of one of the you know one of our our, our staff uh it was in his compound the his 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 brother's bedroom was our office <laughs> but we kept moving oh. forward and I promise you, that batch of students were some of the most fruitful, anointed. They couldn't believe it. They said, this is faith in action. You would have thought they would be complaining, no AC, no this, no that. But when faith is in action, you keep moving forward. All we did was make sure our, eyes, no our eyes were on the Lord. And we, we knew what he had said. Bible school had to go on. And we kept moving forward. Are you listening to me? Amen. Where are you right now? What is it that is going on? If everything is going nice in your life and you're at peace, you can see the future. Everything is nice and dandy. You, everything going well. Praise God. Thank God for you. But if you are in that place today where... <laughs> It looks like it's night time. You can't see the way. The only hope you have is Jesus. The only one you have to hold on to is the Lord. The going is rough. It's ups and downs. In fact, you can't see above the circumstances. And you're in a place where it seems like things can come crashing down on you any minute. That is only the grace of God that is keeping you going. Keeping you surviving. You are in the midst of the Red Sea. You are in the middle of a miracle. Amen. Keep moving forward. Hold your head up high. Keep your eyes on the one who is leading you. Stay at peace. Stay at rest. You know the interesting thing? Whether you are taking leaps of faith or you are taking baby steps of faith, do you realize that in the mixed multitude of the Israelites, there were old people that could only walk little by little. There were young children that could only walk at the pace they could walk. But there were soldiers and young men that could take giant stride. Do you realize this? that every single one of them made Baby. it to the other side. Baby steps. Can I say something to forward. you? You are going to make it to the other side. That's are right. you older and you are taking baby uh, little steps? You will make it. Amen. Are you young and you can take only little steps? You will make it. Amen. Are you running and, and leaping by faith? You will make it. Amen. Just keep moving forward. forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope somebody is blessed this morning. I hope somebody is blessed this morning. Amen. The end of that story I was sharing in India, 
before the end of that session, God brought us to the other side of that Red Sea. And he gave us a fantastic building in a good part of town. I mean, the circumstances for giving that building were even, you know, it's a story for another time. But God brought us to the other side. Amen. He brought us to the other side. You can and imagine. He brought us to a wealthy place. A wealthy place. It can... was a bigger building and everything about it was just better. In a better neighborhood, a bigger building, we had more room. We had. I mean, we had extreme uncommon favor and we look and we're like, wow, why did we want to stay back where we were? <laughs> but that was the end of the miracle. Amen. When we're in the midst of the miracle, it didn't seem like it. All we needed, all we knew was keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your focus on what he said. Keep doing what he said. And keep moving. And he got us there. You will get there in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said you will get there in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will not abandon you in the middle of what you're going through. Amen. I said God will not abandon you in the middle of what you're going through. Amen. He's bringing you out. Amen. Just keep moving forward. Amen. You don't see a way out? Fantastic. Keep your eyes on the Lord. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. He will bring you out. Trust him to bring you out Amen. to the other side. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope you are blessed by that. Amen. Praise God. You have something to say. Mm -hmm. You said it. Yeah. Um, you know, something that just dropped in my spirit, you know, as we were finishing now, is that a lot of times when we're in a particular situation in our life or in a particular season, we believe that's the best season for us. And that's the best situation. And we don't want to change. We don't want to move. We just want to be still. But the interesting thing is we can't see the other side. We can't see the end. We don't know what God has in store for us. Mm. But I tell you what, the end is always better than where you are. Hallelujah. But right now it doesn't look like it. So in thinking back, when we were in that building, I mean, we had everything that we needed is seen to us at the time and we didn't want to leave. It's like, where are we ever going to get a building as big as this or something better than this? That was what we thought. So we wanted to stay there, but God had something better. Now, some of you may be thinking, what are you talking about? There can't be anything better than what I have. I'm happy with what I have. You may be happy, but God is not happy. God has something better for you. Mm. It has something bigger. It has something better. And until you go through that season of change, you're not going to be able to get to the other side to be able to appropriate and get to yourself what God has for you. A lot of times it's like, no, there can't be anything better. I remember, I mean, in, in thinking about it, the different challenges and seasons of our lives that we've gone through, it's always seemed like, no, God, we're just comfortable. We just want to be here. We're just happy with what we have. Don't try to rock the boat. Don't move us. <laughs> We just, we're just happy being right here where we are. But when we actually go through the challenge and we get to the other side, then we see and we're like, oh, wow. Oh, really? Oh, so this is what God has. Oh, so it is really something better. Oh, so the situation can be better. But at the moment when it's happening, we don't see it. So I just want to encourage you. It may not look like it. It may not look like it, but you're a miracle waiting to happen. Yeah, in the middle and, of a miracle. I mean, God, God has your back this morning because it's interesting. I just had that strong word when I shared, and I didn't know my husband was going to be speaking in the, uh, you know, in a line of faith. I guess that's why he said, "Well, we might pack up and leave because you just preached my message." But guess what? God knows exactly where you are. He knows what you need, and he's how he, he wants to get you there. God is more eager because oftentimes I think about my children when they have a need, I want to meet every need that they have. That's the desire that I have. My desire is to be able to make sure I meet every need, to do everything I can to make sure that they are okay. How much more our heavenly father, but unfortunately I'm not able to meet all of their needs. But there's no need that you have that God can't meet Hallelujah. because he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. The oh, earth God. and the fullness thereof belongs unto him. The cattle upon a thousand hills are his. Amen. There's nothing that you need that the Lord will not supply. 
There's nothing that you need that the Lord will not provide. Be it financial, be it health-wise, be it emotional, be it people, be it ability, be it grace, be it skill. He's got it. You trust him. Keep moving forward, walking by faith. And it may not look like it right now. You may say, I just want to camp here. But I tell you what, what God has for you on the other side, if you really knew what it is, you'd be like, okay, God, I want to go through this challenge. Get me through it so that I can get to the other side because there's something bigger and better. Amen. 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 Praise God. So the message is you're in the midst of the, you're in the midst of the sea, meaning you're in the middle of a miracle. Keep moving forward. Amen. You are in the middle of a miracle. Keep moving forward. You will get to the other side in Jesus' name. Let's pray this morning. Hallelujah. Let's pray this morning. I want to pray for anyone that may be in, in, in that situation right now. To where you are in the midst of the things that we described. The going is rough. It looks dark. You can't see a way out. It's bigger than what you can handle. It's beyond your ability. You feel like, man, any any moment now, it seems like everything is just going to come crashing down. It seems like the bottom is going to fall out any moment. If you're right there, you are in the middle of a miracle. Amen. God has you right where he wants you. He led you there. He's not forsaking you That's there. Right. And he will lead you out of it That's right. in the name of Jesus. That's but before we do that, if you're out there and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. We're going to pray for that situa those situations right now. But let's just do this first. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, can I give you uh, an opportunity to invite him into your heart right now? The Bible says, as many as call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. No one who calls, no one who calls on the name of the Lord shall be cast out. He will give you the power to become a child of God. That is why he came. That is why he died. Amen. That is why God raised him from the dead. Amen. To take your sin away, your sins away, and to give you new life, eternal life. Amen. That is the gospel. That is the good news. Amen. That Jesus loves you. He gave his life for you. That you might live. And if you haven't accepted that free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, you can do so this morning just by faith, making a declaration from your own mouth and inviting him by an act of your will. Lord, I surrender my life to you. I invite you to be my Savior and my Lord. I give you my life. If you've not done that and you want to do that for the first time, or maybe you did that before and you straight away, you want to you know, be re rededicate your life to the Lord. You want to come back to him. You can do so as well. Just say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, believe I believe that you died for me. That you died for me. And on the third day, and on the third day, you rose from the dead. You rose from the dead for me. For me. Right now. Right now. Right now. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I invite you. I invite you to come into my heart. To come into my heart. To be my Lord. To be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I give my life to you. I give my life Thank to Thank you for you. washing me clean with your blood. Thank you for washing me clean with your blood. And giving me eternal life. And giving me eternal life. I receive it now. I receive it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you just said that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Congratulations. God just made you his child by a confession of your mouth and on the authority of the word of God. You are now saved. Congratulations. We want to encourage you to get plugged into a Bible-believing church that preaches the word of truth, the word of faith, preaches the Holy Spirit, and just, you know, continue to grow in the things of God. The pastors will be there to feed you with knowledge and understanding so you can keep growing. People will be there to surround you with love and grace so you can they can help you grow. And uh, also, get yourself a Bible. Download one of your device, the Bible app, and I uh, read the Bible every day and hear God speaking to you through his word. And thirdly, make sure you spend time praying every day, talking to your heavenly father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he hears you. He hears you. Have a father. He hears you when you call. He's your maker. He knows your heart. He hears you when you call. Do that and be blessed. Let's pray. What do you want? Let's pray this morning for whoever is out there. I just want us to agree with you in prayer. Hmm? we want to agree with you in prayer that you are out there and you are you didn't realize that you were in the midst of a miracle but you realize now that you are in the midst of a, a red sea that God had part, has had parted Thank you. and you are walking through Thank you. And the going is rough Thank you. 
the winds of adversity are blowing. Thank you. It's dark. Thank you. And the situation seems insurmountable. Thank you. Lord. You don't see a way out. Thank you. You Lord. feel like things are going to fall apart. Thank you. Lord. If that is you, you are right in the middle of a miracle. And we're going to pray and agree right now that God will give you grace to keep Thank moving you. forward. Thank you. To keep your eyes focused on Him. Thank to you. keep moving forward by faith until you get to the other side. Thank you. That's all I will pray right now. For Precious us. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we call upon you today. Lord, you are our heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. You are Abba Father. Yes, Lord. You said we can come to you and we can cry, Abba Father. Yes, Father. Because, Lord, you have been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Yes, Lord. You've sat where we've sat. You've been where we've been. Lord, in the quiet moments when no one sees and when no one knows what we're going through, in those quiet moments when we sit and we weep and we cry, and we call out to you. Lord, you are there to see it all. Lord, today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bring your people before you. Lord, you know exactly where the shoe is hurting. Lord, you know what they are going through. You know what pain they are experiencing. Father, I pray today that you will meet them at their point of need. I pray, Lord God, that your healing anointing will flow down from heaven. And will bind up, Lord God every wound every stomp and lord you will you will heal lord yes, lord today lord. you will restore yes lord. lord let your mercy let it prevail yes, lord. lord in the place of hurt let her be healing yes lord. lord in the place lord god daddy of 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 hopelessness lord let 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 your hope lord let it be seen yes, jesus you are the light of the world lord help help your people to see again help them not to see again lord bring restoration restore lord lord take away lord god the burden yes take away lord god that is the shame take away lord god that is the hopelessness and bring healing and bring restoration help lord, lord help us lord to be able to see that lord there is something bigger and better on the other side and lord even as my sister sister jenny lord has asked for prayer today lord i pray for sister jenny lord for sister jane lord let your healing anointing let it flow onto her lord wrap your arm of love around her like only you can lord only you know what she's going through words are not enough to explain there may be people around her that are trying to comfort her but there's a comfort that comes from you lord help sister jean to see that indeed there is light on the other side that there are better days ahead that lord there is joy on the other side that there's still victory ahead that she will laugh again that she will lord god had it laugh again that lord she will be able lord god had it to go forward because your grace is being released yes, to her lord. even right now lord we release grace on sister jean cook and we say grace unto you sister the mercy of god the grace of god the ability of god the joy of god is being released unto you right now to move forward to forge ahead the things that you could not do before you will do them you will do even much more than you did when brother dennis was alive because there is more on the inside of you the grace the world the holy ghost you and god moving forward lord will speak a blessing over her yes. and for everyone else lord that is needing prayer this morning lord whether it is healing lord you are there lord whether it is finances lord you are lord god that is the one that supplies you said you are the need meter that you will supply every one of our needs according to your riches and glory by christ jesus i speak to lack to go i speak to money to come right now in the name of jesus i speak to situations to change i speak to doors to open i speak to finances to come i speak lord god that is for open doors of common favor supernatural our favor yes, lord god yes. thank you that you're taking your people from thank where you. they are to where they ought to be lord let your glory let it be revealed yes, in the name of yes, jesus. jesus everything that has dug their trail hitherto yes, i command lord. a shifting i command lord god a shifting lord god in the realm of the spirit every demon that has been on assignment holding people down he limiting them hindering them i command you to take a leave right now in, in the name, name of jesus and i declare liberty in, in Jesus, Jesus' name. name. I declare wholeness in, in the Jesus. name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, let your glory, Lord, let it be revealed. Yes, Father. Finish it.
Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Father. Father, we say yes and amen to these prayers, and we just thank you. Thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. And thank you for continuing to lead your people into the fullness of your purpose, fullness of your destiny. Thank you, Father, for the grace to keep moving forward. Lord, those who have stopped, that they stand up again and keep moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father, for testimonies of victory. Lord, we will get to the end of our miracles and we will look back and say thank you. But in the midst of it we look up and yes, we say thank you lord. thank you lord thank you lord thank god you, lord. thank you lord thank god you, lord. we give you praise and thank glory you, lord. we bless your yes, holy father. name thank you for this thank word today you, let it work in the hearts yes, of your lord. people we bless you lord yes father in jesus name, in jesus name. Amen. Amen. amen amen i know that our time is off but i just really have it strongly on my heart to share this um short um testimony with you just recently when we moved back from India, we were going to come back, we were going to move in to a place. Um, in, in, we had a room that we were supposed to move, it, move into in church, but for whatever reason, that room was supposed to have been available to us, but it was occupied and we were so sad. We were like sad. So what are we going to do? Where are we going to stay? It's better to stay in that place. But we didn't, we didn't really know what the future was. We thought we were just going to be in that place for a, 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 maybe a couple of weeks. But God knew that we were not going to be there for just a couple of weeks. And that it was going to be challenging and frustrating for a family of five to stay in a studio apartment for that long. And so that door was shut. And it, it, it seemed like, how are we going to move forward? We couldn't see in front of us. We were stuck there. But you know what God did? He opened a door for us and made a way. And we had a wonderful family, our adopted parents, that took us in, into their home, into a big house, where we didn't just have a room, but we had rooms to ourselves. The kids had a room that they could stay. We had a place. We could go to the living room. We could use the kitchen. We could move around. And we didn't stay with them for a space of four weeks. We stayed with them for eight months. God knew that. And that's why he made that way. And when we were going to leave India, we didn't want to leave. It's like, why God? We did everything we could to make sure that we didn't leave. But that door was closed. But would you know? We didn't know, but God knew the pandemic was going to happen. And it was preventing us from experiencing the pandemic being in India under those circumstances. I don't know where you are today. I know it's difficult. It looks bleak. It's like, how? Look, Sister Busola, what are you talking about? I don't know. This situation, I don't, God, I don't see a way out. Let God just make it better for me now. Don't you worry. He's taking you through because there's something bigger and better on the other side. It may not look like it now. It never looks like it. But when you get there, you will look back. And say, look what the Lord has done. And so shall it be. In Jesus' name. I love you. Have a blessed week. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Sorry to keep you. Amen. Amen. And we can keep going, going, but you know, we're gonna stop. Um, always remember this. The benefit of going through is that you have a testimony to share of God's glory in your life. Amen. All through the life of the Israelites, they were able to look back to the Red Sea. Amen as a demonstration of God's power and glory Amen. in their lives. Amen. So when you're going through, it doesn't look pleasant, but it will be for your good Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Please remember, we have to quit now, but remember to get the book, The House of Prayer Built, available on Amazon, all online retailers, uh, where books are sold um, online. Uh, get that and leave a review if you read it on Amazon, on Google. Um, buy one for yourself, buy one for your um, relatives, for your friends. Um, you know, use it for curriculum in, you know, in uh, Bible study, small groups. It will be a blessing to you. The House That Prayer Built, uh, the book that I wrote. If you would like to give to us, if the Lord moves on your heart to give to us, to our ministry, uh, to keep doing what God has given us to do, uh, you can do so by uh, one of several means. Uh, PayPal is at aadibanjo at gmail.com. You can use that. Venmo is at adi-adibanjo. 
at Zell, if you're in the US, you can do by Zell Ambassade International 15 at gmail.com. That email is scrolling on the screen, it's been scrolling all through. And then uh, by wire transfer or direct deposit to our bank account, Adi Ambusala Adi Banjo, TD Bank NA, um, account number 433 0370 routing number 03120 Um Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time to be with us to hear this message. We pray that it has been encouraging to you and we ask that you please share it, share it with others, share this message, let people hear it and be encouraged and be built up and edified. Have a tremendous weekend. We love you. We will see you again next Friday on Ambassade Live and maybe through the week uh, as the Lord lays a word on our heart. You can stay in touch with us. Instagram, uh, address is at Rev Doc Adi. That's Rev Reverend Doc D O C Adi Reverend Doc Adi. Uh, email us at Ambassade International fifteen at gmail dot com. Let us have your prayer requests, your praise report, testimonies. Uh, just you know, communicate with us. We look forward to hearing from you. If you have questions about how you can support us and you want more information, you can also write to us that way on email or on Facebook. You can direct message me uh, through Messenger. Also YouTube. If you go to YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Adi Ambusola Adi Banjo. You have uh, these videos and many more uh, to help you continue to grow in your faith and to work out God's purpose for your life. God bless you. Have a tremendous yes, weekend. Yes, thank you to all the people. Shout out to uh, the people that have joined us today. So many. Uh, Sister Margarita Moraza, good to see you again. Mommy Michelle Niku, God bless you. Uh, Sister Susie, as usual, you're a blessing. We love you. Thanks for always being there. Um, uh, Pastor Fred Chin, I love you, brother. Continue to keep the fire burning and keep, you know, uh, preaching the gospel and leading people to the Lord and being who God has called you to be. Uh, Pastor Wilbur Genty, God bless you, my brother. Uh, Restoration Church, we love you. Uh, sending words of prayer and blessings to you, Sister Maribel. Uh, Miss Jean, Miss Jeannie, God bless you. Thanks for joining. We love you. We have you. We have you in our prayers and just upholding you. May the Lord continue to uphold you with his righteous right hand, strengthen you and help you. Uh, Sister Maribel, I love you, sister, as usual. Uh, just be a blessing. Mommy Adebanjo, thank you for staying on and just, you know, for your love, your prayers and support always. Uh, Brother T, Pastor T, good to see you. Uh, love to Sister Loy and the girls there in Calcutta. Uh, the testimony I shared, uh, the, our passing through the Red Sea was actually in his compound. We were having our offices in one of his brother's apartments in the bedroom. And, you know, Brother T is a tremendous man of God. And he has been a blessing to uh, the work of God uh, in India and increasingly in other parts of the world as God opens the door for him. You have, we have you in your prayers. We love you. God bless you all. If I didn't mention your name, maybe I didn't see you. But we appreciate you joining and being part of our broadcast today. Share the feed. Share, share, share. When you go to YouTube, like and subscribe. Um, click the notification bell so that way when we upload new videos, you can, you know, you you can be made aware of it and partake of it. And if you want us to come minister for you or you want us to uh, mention us to your pastors, we'll be happy to come and share a word and encourage the body of Christ. Amen. We look forward to seeing you all soon. Have a tremendous week and God bless you. Bye now. Bye -bye. Love you.